Hi, today we're going to talk about how to improve volumetric efficiency. By definition, the efficiency is the ratio of mass of air draw into the cylinder to the cylinder sweep volume. So you can know any other uh, stuff, we just focus on the mass of air. Why that is so interesting for the engineers? First, it gives the engineers how much fuel the engine has to inject inside of the cylinder, right? And the second thing is, in order to achieve stoichiometric ratio throughout the engine load, throughout various driving conditions, we have to make sure we always have the right amount of air that is available for the engine to use. But before we go on the other slides, I hope you can check the links uh, on Google type in stoichiometric ratio and pumping losses if you haven't encountered them in the past. The first one we're going to talk about is dynamic supercharging and after that is mechanical and exhaust gas turbocharging. Right, for the uh, figure on the left, it's the uh, it's basically a lung tube uh, goes into the intake manifold and uh, uh, attaches next to the opening valve. Uh, from the picture, you can see there is a pressure wave. Just to imagine that's airflow. Uh, if we think about the wave as a sinusoidal wave, right? You have the high point and the low point. What the engineer is trying to do is match the opening time of the valve against the high point of the wave. Therefore, we'll have a, a higher flow. We'll have a, we'll have a, a, a higher velocity and a higher amplitude, which is good for the, uh, the engine to pull in the air. The figure on the right is from uh, an academic article, which is the link I've shown you below. So uh, from the graph, what we can see is the impact of uh, dimensions of the tube, how it can help the volumetric efficiency. The longer the tube, right, the, uh, the, the quicker the response, you have if we look at the uh, the gradient of this one, it's much sharper than the others, and the uh, the, the highest volumetric efficiency uh, is is a lot larger than the other ones. And also, if you type in RAM tube uh, induction kit, you will find some extra information about that. However, there is a design feature of uh, this type of charging, which is um, uh, the lengths of that, which will take up a lot of space in the engine compartment. And the other thing uh, is the um, flexibility. It's not as flexible as a turbocharger because we can operate turbocharger um, at a various condition by changing, you know, the, the, uh, the profile of the flow by using flaps or, uh, or some of the other forms I'm going to show you later. And also for this type of um, uh, charging, it's very difficult for the engine engineers try to, to match the pressure wave against the opening time valve because it's a, such a compli complicated system to un understand the wave. Let's say when someone puts the pressure down and uh, we all it's very difficult to get an instant response. So let's go on the other type of uh, 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 charging. Oh, I, I shouldn't call it supercharging, but anyhow. So for this one, uh, it doesn't show in the picture, but actually inside there's a flap to control the flow, to control the velocity, to alter the pressure, right? And also it can change the lens of the uh, of the tube as well. Just imagine if the engine is running at high speed, right? We might need a longer length of a tube, right? If the engine is running at a low speed, uh, low load, we can shorten the um, the length of the tube by applying flaps. It helps us to get a better result of the the, the mass of the air. At the same time, we also we can uh, select which cylinder we want the air to go in. And uh, the 
the uh, the other one is um, obviously mechanical supercharging. It's quite popular ones in the um, in in nineties or eighties for big cars, and you often see them uh, uh, with American cars. If you see the American um, muscle cars, they always have a big. Uh, uh, it's like um, a bracket attached on the top of the, uh, the the hood, which is trying to suck the air in. Uh, uh, the uh, the function of it is very easy to understand. You know, the air goes in, right? Try to compress the air, and uh, the air cool cool air goes in uh, to increase the, the mass of uh, the, the cylinder charge. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So the good thing about the uh, supercharger is there is no delay, right? Because uh, essentially uh, the uh, the shaft of uh, the supercharger is not is connected with the crankshaft, so energy from the crankshaft um, being transmitted to the uh, to the supercharger. So how how fast the uh, the crankshaft is spinning uh, is equivalent is proportionally uh, increasing the speed. Of the supercharger, and uh, uh, the good, uh, the other good thing about that is uh, it's uh, slightly simple in from an uh, engineering perspective, right? It's, it's easier to manufacture because it doesn't, it's, it's not subjected to a uh, high temperature of the exhaust gas, which are which otherwise we would. Uh, experience that in the uh, exhaust gas turbocharger and the second thing is there is less control stuff going on right uh, however the bad thing is that obviously there's you go, you're gonna pay higher fuel consumption um, in order to increase the power of your car and um, however in some uh, advanced engines they can have a switchable uh, uh, supercharger so it only operates at a certain point at a certain condition 